poor mitochondrial function, which is it might be not good memory or they're mold exposed or they're tired, that ozone is really helpful in those treatments because it activates mitochondria. Stress is the inflammation that robs us of life, energy, and happiness. Our typical solutions for gut health and hormone balance have let a lot of us down. We're over-medicated and underserved. At The Less Stressed Life, we're a community of health-savvy women exploring solutions outside of our traditional Western medicine toolbox and training to raise the bar and change our stories. Each week, our hope is that you leave our sessions inspired to learn, grow, and share these stories to raise the bar in your life and home. Access to functional or specialized medicine testing and standard blood work is a big piece of personalizing care plans to help our clients succeed. But getting accounts with multiple labs and ordering and tracking results from many different web portals slows efficiency by bogging us down in admin work. This is why I'm completely obsessed with our podcast sponsor, Rupa Health. It's a single portal that allows you to order from over 20 specialty labs in one incredibly simple dashboard. I'm talking less than 30 seconds to set up your free account and about 30 seconds to order the labs you need. All the results are in one place and I can securely send clients their results with the click of a button. A big advantage for our clients is that standard blood work can be ordered for almost two thirds less than other direct to consumer lab sites. Rupa is a lab concierge, so they send the lab invoices on your behalf if a client pays for their own labs. They help them get set up with a lab draw, navigate testing questions, and they provide the requisition forms. It's literally a dream. Go sign up for free to help streamline your practice and simplify ordering labs for your clients at rupahealth.com. That's R-U-P-A health.com and let them know I sent you when you sign up. You can also check out the show notes for this episode for a short video walkthrough of how I use Rupa Health in my own practice. All right, today on The Less Stress Life, we have return guest, Dr. David Minkoff. He was last seen on The Less Stress Life podcast back in April, episode 173, where he talked about Lyme disease and gave us some fabulous insights on treating Lyme. And it was at that time where uh, he gave us his story, kind of. When I describe him to people, I say, this is the guy that has trained with all the greats in all of the major areas and kind of can treat everything. And so I've been looking for someone to talk about ozone. So here we are talking a little bit about ozone. And the reason for that is because I have fond memories of ozone. Right before my wedding, my husband and I had come down and gotten terribly sick a couple of days before our wedding. So we went to see someone who ozonated some water, which we drank. And in an hour, we were completely better, which of course blew our minds at that time in early young adult life. After that time, I looked for an ozone generator to do this on my own at home and found nothing that really compared to it. And in general, in society, we sometimes use ozone for sterilization. They use it in hotels to get smells out of things. We actually just added an ozone generator to our life to get some smells out of like cars at the farm and some different things. So Ozone is a very curious topic and you use it a lot in practice. So yes, I'd love to hear first, if you will share how you originally got, when you originally went to do training in ozone and why you decided to add that to your toolbox when your toolbox um, was becoming rather, you have really accumulated a lot of things in the toolbox over the last several decades. Yes. I think I have the fullest toolbox in the world. I think so too. I think so too. So I got new stuff coming in now. We're just adding new, I've got some new fun tools. So yeah, never stop. Anyway. So tell me when you first started doing training in ozone and why you added that to the toolbox. I was doing a lot of prolotherapy. So prolotherapy is injecting a glucose solution, like a 15% glucose solution in areas, in joints, around joints, in painful areas to stimulate a healing response for people who had pain, you know, knee pain, back pain, neck pain, elbow pain, tennis elbow pain. And it was very effective, but you had to do a lot of injections. It's quite painful and not everybody could put up with it. And I trained with the master in that and I did very well at it. It was lots of fun because almost everybody, it worked on. You know, their chronic hip, they didn't need their hip replacement. I mean, it was really good. 
And then I heard about this guy named Frank Schallenberger. He's a maverick doctor in Carson City, Nevada. And he's sort of the father of ozone in the United States. And he went to Germany, would go to the alternative medicine meetings in Germany, and he learned about ozone, and he went to Italy. And the greats who were doing ozone research were Italians. And he learned how to do it. And he came back and he started doing classes for doctors to learn how to do ozone as a local injection therapy, but also to do it as a systemic therapy where you could put ozone in people's bloodstream and the ozone would help them with various things. And so I went and did the course with him and I sort of jumped in with both feet right after that. And I started doing it lots and lots of people. And then what we added to it was adding ultraviolet blood irradiation to the ozone. So it's another thing that you can do to activate the immune system and kill bad guys. Mm -hmm. And so most practices would have one or two of these machines. And we ended up with 11 because we had so many people doing it that just to keep up with it, it, it just required more UVBI devices. And so I've estimated that we've done in the last 10 years about over 50,000 IV ozone treatments on people, which is really a lot. Mm -hmm. It's very, very safe. We have never had, now that's a lot of treatments, 50,000 treatments is a lot of patient treatments. No one has ever gone to the hospital after an ozone treatment. No one's ever died after an ozone treatment. So it's very, very safe and it's very effective. Now, we also do ozone in a sauna, in a steam sauna. It's called HOCAT, H-O-C-A-T-T. And it's like a space capsule where the patient gets in, some sort of wings come across so that they're in, but their head is out. Have you seen one of these things? Mm -mm, I haven't. Okay. So while they're in there, they breathe 100% oxygen. So they have a nasal cannula. And the first five minutes, they get steam and we can dial in the temperature and they get a carbon dioxide bath. So carbon dioxide gas goes in this chamber. Carbon dioxide makes the blood vessels in the skin dilate, expand. So like the skin circulation, our largest organ in our body is the skin. So the skin like opens up and then the carbon dioxide's turned off and the ozone's turned on. So ozone is oxygen. The oxygen that we breathe is two oxygens together. So it's O2. Ozone is O3. And ozone is a free radical. It's got a minus charge on it. And our white blood cells, when they want to kill a bad guy, they make a mixture of ozone and hydrogen peroxide. That's how they kill bacteria and viruses. So ozone is a very natural substance to the body. It's not foreign. And it's a gas. It has a peculiar smell if you've ever smelled a, like an ozone air freshener. Mm -hmm. So the person can get in this chamber and get, a, get ozone for a half an hour. And at the same time, they get infrared light and microcurrent. There's like five things that are going on at the same time. In our clinic, it's very popular. We have four of these things and people get energized and they get detox. You know, after this thing, because you sweat in there because it's steam. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the bottom of the thing at the end, you'll see all kinds of garbage that's come out of these people as a result of the detox process. But they also get energized because ozone is energizing. So that's where I started. And then we just, you know, it was so effective. We would just do it for everything. And it works for sick people because it kills bad guys. And it detoxifies and it boosts immune system. But, you know, we're in a city where we've got three professional sports teams, you know, Tampa Bay, and we have professional athletes that come in here and they get ozone treatments because it's also a performance enhancer. Mm -hmm. Like it makes the little factories in your cell, the mitochondria, it makes them work better. Mm -hmm. So people can run faster or jump higher or lift more when they're getting ozone treatments. So I'm sort of an extremist. So if I dive into something, I just really dive. Mm -hmm. And so we've done a lot of it. And it's fun if you're a doctor and your patients get better. Oh, yeah. And ozone is one of these things that works almost every time. Mm -hmm. So that's why oh, we do it. Yeah. I want to talk about all the ways you use it. But first, let's clear up a little bit of science and potential contraindications. Because like in hotels, you use it in a smoking room to get it out. And it's very corrosive to the lungs. There's warnings all over it. Get out of there when it's on. Yeah. And then if you talk to a science teacher, they're like, well, that's a free radical. Your body makes that for whatever, like that can't be good for you. So how do we kind of make this thing that can be corrosive and also a free radical 
you know, which is not usually connotated as good. How do we make that into a good thing? Like if we're putting ozone and we're in a little capsule and we're not, how is the ozone delivered in a way that's not harmful to the lungs or that is more helpful? Right. So the area of the body that's sensitive to ozone or where ozone can be harmful is the lungs. So if you breathe ozone at too high a concentration, it is irritating. If you put on ozone air pressures in your house and you have pets, they can have trouble if it's too high. And you can have trouble if it's too high. So we never have people breathe it directly. Now, if you put it through like an essential oil, like olive oil or coconut oil, if you bubble it through because it's a gas, Mm -hmm. you can then breathe it. But you can inject it into bladders, into joints, into muscles with no harm. Body tolerates it very well, but you can't breathe it straight. Otherwise, it's safe. You could put it directly into the bloodstream. It's very safe. So it is a free radical. So it's O minus, you know, it's O3 minus. So it's good. It's three oxygens. Ozone, probably everyone who's been here has, or who's listening to this has heard about the ozone layer mm-hmm. in the atmosphere and the ozone layer. So ozone is O3. The oxygen we breathe is O2. So the, the O2 is in the upper atmosphere. If a lightning bolt hits an O2, it will split that oxygen to oxygen bond into single oxygen. And single oxygen is very unstable. They will not stay apart. They will either recombine to be O2, or if you have an O2 in the area and you've got a single O1, it will bind onto the O2 and form O3, which is ozone. So the ozone layer is created by lightning in the upper atmosphere. We can make ozone in the clinic from a little device called an ozone generator, and it's a high electrical current. It's oxygen exposed to a high electrical current, which splits the O2s into O1s. They combine into O3s, and they come in O2, and they go out O3. I wonder why it smells different. I've never thought about it. It's different. Yeah, Yeah. it's a different, uh, it's different. Yeah. Different chemical. I interrupted you there. Did you have a thought to finish? Okay. Well, you're making me think about as a gas, you talked about, you've answered some of my questions along the way. Because you do see ozone put into oils and sometimes sold. So we can talk about what, the, if you know, if that's meritable or not. So we can use ozone, we can deliver it via oil without it being corrosive to the lungs. You mentioned you can put it into the bloodstream. Is there a carrier? Are you injecting gas into the bloodstream? What does that actually look like? Because when I think about gas in general, I think about a really unstable thing, right? That dissipates after it like goes out into the air. Right. If you put ozone in a syringe, you have to do it. You have to deliver it right away because within a half an hour to 40 minutes, it's about half gone. It does it does degenerate. The usual way ozone is delivered is that some blood is removed from the body. So between 100 and 250 cc's of blood are actually pulled out either from a syringe or by gravity. An IV is put in. An empty IV bag would be put on a stool near the floor. By gravity, the blood run out. There's a anticoagulant put in the bag so the blood doesn't clot. So maybe over 10 minutes, the 200 cc's of blood goes in the bag. The ozone gas is then drawn up in a syringe and it's injected into the bag where the blood is. Now, the blood coming out of you is vein blood. It's got low oxygen and it looks dark red. If you inject the ozone in there, it turns bright red. It looks like arterial blood. It's like a beautiful bright red. Mm. Now that blood is now saturated with ozone oxygen. Now then that can be run back into the person. Sometimes it's run directly back in. Sometimes it's run through a machine, which will expose the blood to different wavelengths of ultraviolet light. And ultraviolet light has an effect on mitochondria, on white blood cells, viruses, and it sort of activates it even more. Mm-hmm. So those are the two ways that it's usually done. Okay. Now people will hear, some people do it where that's would be called a one pass. So one amount of blood is put in a bag, it's ozonated, and it goes back into the body. There are devices where it's a machine and it'll actually suck the blood out of the body. The ozone is added to it, but a device adds it to it, and then it's pushed back into the body. And that would be one pass. And sometimes people are delivering five passes where it would be done five times or 10 times. So people might hear of this thing called 10 pass, where you do it 10 times. So you get 10 times the ozone that you get if you were just doing a one pass. Wow. Now, 
we, we have to be careful with this because people, if they're sick, you know, or they're sensitive or they're very depleted, you can overdo it and you can give them a Herx reaction. You can make them sick. You can kill a lot of bacteria or Lyme, back, you know, viruses, and they can get sick. So we do it. We start them a little bit. They're okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. So we work it up so that we're giving them a dose that they can actually easily tolerate. And then they don't get sick. Mm -hmm. So this is, do we call this an ozone injection technically, if we're doing it via the blood? How do, what do you call this officially? We call it MAH, major auto hemotherapy, because hemo's blood. Auto means it's your own blood, self blood, and major because it's a lot of blood. It's 100 to 250 cc's. Which is less than one. That would be like a one pass. Okay, got it. We have another machine here. There's only a few of them in the United States where we actually hook someone up, one IV in one arm, a dialysis machine in the middle with an ozone generator attached to it, and then a, a going out one that goes into the other arm. So the machine sucks the blood out of one arm. It puts it through a dialysis type filter so that if you have sludged proteins or red blood cells, they get filtered out. And then when the blood is filtered, it's ozonated. So ozone gas is continually going into the bloodstream directly, and then it goes back into your body. And that is cycled for about 45 minutes. So you do your, you treat your whole blood supply several times. Now that's quite a bit stronger. I never give that to someone as a first treatment. Once they've done some ozone, then we can graduate them up to that. Who and, would you use that for? What would be the well? I eat mold to do patients and sick Lyme patients, cancer patients, because it's a big ozone treatment and it helps filter impurities out. When people are, you know, they have a lot of toxic residues in their body. It really is effective, mm -hmm. and it's also it's well tolerated. So this is we talked about major auto therapy, right? Where we kind of take it out, put ozone into the blood, put it back in, plus this other version where we're using a dialysis machine. I don't know if you also call that MAH or if you call that. No, we call that EBO. E -B -O -O. Okay. E is extracorporeal. So it means we're doing, we're treatment, the blood outside the corpus, okay. the body. Okay. Got it. B is blood. So it's E-B-O-O. -O. So extra corporeal blood, mm -hmm. ozone oxygen treatment. Okay. Do you use any other modalities besides this blood? I'm guessing many. There's insufflation, right? Where you take it through the, this is interesting because now I think about this being hard on the lungs and I'm just trying to visualize how you actually do this. So what are some of the other ways you deliver ozone in practice? And then we can talk about who is well, the right fit for those things. Some people have this condition called interstitial cystitis. Mm -hmm. So cystis is the bladder mm -hmm. and they have an irritated bladder wall. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult condition. Mm -hmm. They feel like they have to pee all the time. They have chronic bladder pain. Sex is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very distressing to people. It's mostly women. And the traditional treatments are marginally effective. You know, it's not an actual infection in most cases. So antibiotics or things like that don't usually take care of it. And so about between 80 and 90% of the time, if we actually put a catheter into the bladder and inject a mixture of some homeopathics, a local anesthetic, some B vitamins, and then ozone, do that a couple times a week. About 85% of the time, within six weeks, the woman will not have any more bladder pain. The interstitial cystitis will be cured. So that's a really good one, and it's, it's enormous relief to people. Mm -hmm. We use ozone in cancer. Now, I have injected ozone directly into tumors if they're close to the surface. We use it with, for cancer patients, we can give them a medical dye. It's called methylene blue. And if you expose methylene blue to ozone and ultraviolet light, you can turn it into kind of a cancer attacking molecule. And so our cancer patients get methylene blue with ozone with ultraviolet light. And that's also another way to deliver ozone sort of in a, in a different way. Mm -hmm. There are some, this insufflation through the nose. I think there's rectal. Do you do those in practice? Yes. So rectal ozone, many people who get treatment here, when they go home, we have them get an ozone generator mm. and have them do rectal ozone three to five times a week. It's actually a very easy procedure. The ozone can go into an empty IV bag. 
put a little catheter in it. It's put in the rectum. The bag is squeezed. The ozone goes into the colon and it's absorbed just like it would be if you put it in the bloodstream. It's not as strong as the blood, but it's something that can be done at home. We do do on patients that have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, where they have very inflamed, irritated membranes in their colon or their the end of their small intestine. And local ozone is very healing. Mm. It'll often stop bleeding in people who are having a lot of bleeding with those conditions. Nice. So we do that in the clinic as well. And then when those people are better, they can do it at home by themselves. Okay. So you can put it about anywhere, like a guy with a sprained knee or arthritis with pain. You can inject ozone into the knee joint uh, and in the ligaments around the knee joint, and it calms down inflammation and it helps with pain. I have some questions about that, but if you're doing it via nasal, how are you not irritating the lungs? (laughs) You got to run it through. If you're doing nasal, either you have the person hold their breath and inject it into their nose. And then if it sits there for 10 seconds, then breathe it, breathe out. Or you can run the ozone gas through a glass that's got ozone in it and that's got oil in it, like Mm -hmm. olive oil or coconut oil or flax oil. And when it goes through the oil, its irritant level goes way down. So then you could breathe it. We put it in the ears. Like we have people come in, if they've got ringing in their ears, like tinnitus, about 80% of the time, if they get eight to 10 treatments in their ears, so it's like a stethoscope, it gets put in their ears, the ozone gas runs in the ears, it goes through the ear membrane, and it helps heal the nerves up that are ringing because they're irritated or they're inflamed. If someone's feeling like they're coming down with a sinus infection or a cold, you can put ozone into the ears and you can feel it in the sinuses. It will get through into the sinuses. And sometimes that turns off, you know, a brewing infection. Cool. You mentioned spraying knees. There's someone local to me that most of our family's gone to, to have a prolozone injections, but I believe it's ozone mixed with a little bit of cortisone for that pain area. Is that typical? Or are you just doing, when you're injecting it in the knee, is there some other way you're keeping that ozone stable or is that typically? Because it seems like they have a compounding pharmacy that compounds that one day and it has to be used the next day, of course. Kind of you said, if you don't use things right away, it would... Well, the the Schallenberger solution, which is what Mm -hmm. most of us are using. Yeah. So there's a little bit of procaine in there, which is a local anesthetic or lidocaine. And there's Tremil, which is a homeopathic anti-inflammatory. And there's like one drop of hydrocortisone mm. and there's a, some B vitamins, B12. So the needle goes in the knee joint and that solution is injected first. It might be five cc's of that solution. And it somewhat numbs the inside and the needle's left in place. The syringe is taken off and then the ozone gas is directly injected into the knee. Mm. 10 cc's, 15 cc's, depending on the size of the person. So you sort of see it kind of expand and swell. And then the needle's pulled out and then the knee is sort of waved back and forth so that you can sort of disperse the solution in the ozone. And then the person goes home. And so for knee pain or knee sprain or reduced joint motion, it's really good. Yeah. So we've talked about MAH, EB, OO, I believe. Um, We talked about injection into the bladder, rectal insufflation, nasal insufflation, just you know, the Schallenberger solution, any other ways you administer this? Yeah. Like someone who's got a wound infection or an injury where it's poorly healing, you can actually put a garbage bag. Let's say it's on the shin, like a place where the healing, where the blood supply isn't very good, Mm -hmm. especially in an older person and the Mm -hmm. chances of infection are high, or it's, it already looks like it's infected. Mm -hmm is that you can put a, just take a, uh, like a plastic garbage bag, tape it up just below the knee, tape, you know, cut a hole in the bottom, cut it right below the ankle. So the area where the wound is, is covered by the bag. Mm -hmm. You poke a little hole in the bag, put the catheter in there from the ozone machine and run the ozone directly into that little area so that the wound is getting real high dose ozone. Mm -hmm. And it helps healing dramatically. Cool. How is that different from hyperbaric oxygen treatment, which I've heard that's how they do like field dressing. They've been like kind of looking at doing that same thing with an oxygen tank in the field. I don't know how, I guess that would be just one molecule of oxygen different, right? 
So is that the... Is yeah. That the- in, in, in truth, if you draw up ozone from an ozone generator, mm-hmm. 95% of it is oxygen and 5% of it's ozone. Okay. So it's mostly oxygen, but there is ozone in there too. Hyperbaric oxygen is good for wounds because mm-hmm. it's oxygen. And I think ozone is also good for wounds because it's oxygen, but it also, if there's some bacteria in there, it will get at the bacteria directly mm-hmm. and be like a antibiotic, so to speak. Got it. Okay. So we talked about prolotherapy, prolotherapy versus prolozone, which is a question I have, because I think to the standard person, when people are getting injections for pain, it all sounds kind of similar, doesn't it? All right. right. <laughs> Very different. But so from a 15% glucose solution to prolozone, which works much better and has a different solution. So you're using this in almost everything. And I think one of the things that you really provide in your clinic is for people who are seriously ill with some stuff they have not been able to get help with before, Lyme, cancer, mold issues. And I know you can use this for pretty much everyone. You've given us some examples. Are there any other major conditions that you feel like you're using ozone for? I mean, does almost everyone who walks in the door get ozone therapy now, despite that the toolbox is huge, is ozone like a really go-to for you guys? And what else do you yeah. like to use it for? Yeah. Everybody gets ozone. Okay. Got it. I get ozone, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm not sick, mm-hmm. right. but I try to get an ozone treatment every week. I got one on Monday. I have a staff meeting. They wire me up. And during the meeting, I get an ozone because mm-hmm. it makes it immunity. It makes a big difference. Ozone has been used in hospitals in other parts of the world for the disease that I can't mention. Sure. Um, and it's very effective. Yeah. Like it's I, very effective. Yeah. I was actually, I wanted to ask you if you had any fun with a disease that cannot be mentioned this year with ozone, but I would just presume the answer would be yes. If you use it. Yeah. Ozone right. plus vitamin C, you know, nobody goes to the hospital. Nobody mm-hmm. dies. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so it's really good against infectious type things, viruses. And, you know, someone, if you, we get a kid, uh, I had a kid this week, actually, he's the son of one of the people who works for me. He's 14 years old and he's got mono really bad. Mm-hmm. And we gave him three days with MAH and 25 grams of IV vitamin C. And in about 48 hours, he was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, he just felt fine. Like it really made a difference. And he just came right back up and he went back to school the next week. And it looked like he was going to go down because he had a couple of days at home over the weekend where he wasn't treated. And, you know, he's in bed. He was really sick. He had fevers. So these things are, they're really effective. Mm -hmm. Right. You mentioned earlier with the EBOO that you're one of a few machines in the U.S. So is this something you've kind of created with a dialysis machine or is this something you have ordered? We talked earlier about how this is much more prevalent in Germany and in Italy, or is this something that they are using in Europe and you adopted as well? This machine was actually developed in Malaysia okay. and they've been doing it a long time. And there's a doctor in Los Angeles who had a machine and he mentioned there's some ozone websites for doctors, some sort of bulletin board sites. So I'm on a couple of them. And he mentioned that he had one of these machines. And at the time, there were only four in the United States. And I called him and said, what do you think? And he said, oh, it's great. Get one. So we got one. It's a year now. And we're needing another one because the machine, you know, we're like full, like we need another one. At the time we bought it, there was five. There's probably some more now because it's being promoted more. And now there's some U.S. companies that are making them. So it's going to be more prevalent and it's very good. It's much more expensive than a standard ozone treatment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, budget is a consideration in this. And I, so depending on the patient, we try to do what's the best thing. Yeah. A dialysis treatment in the U.S. is about, well, when I left, I once worked in dialysis. I think it was about $2,000 per treatment. So. um, Yeah. So this is about 1500. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of a big deal. And one doesn't here. do it. I mean, you need to get three or four. It's once a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can hear, I just have like a natural curiosity about ozone from my personal experiences. And I want people to know that ozone kind of the purpose of the podcast, right. Is to help open up our eyes to that. We have lots of wonderful treatments out there in the world. It's a matter of, can you get connected to these treatments? What are we missing that we need to discuss about ozone? We talked about, you know, it being a danger to the lungs. And so some ways to make that safe is through oil. So maybe can we talk about if ozone stays stable in oil, and if that's a meritable option for people with skin infections, et cetera. It is. You know, if I see patients with like acne Mm -hmm. or rosacea, they can use it topically. And I think it works better than, you know, topical tetracycline or whatever the dermatologists are using, sulfur drugs. Mm -hmm. And 
If the person is very sensitive to the ozone gas smell, like I'm really sensitive to the smell. Mm -hmm. If I put one of the ozonated oils or the ozonated gels on my skin and I can smell it, it bothers me. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm very sensitive to smell, so that's not true of everybody else. I just saw a woman that had what they thought was cancer of her vulva. And the surgeon wanted to do a big excision of an area of her vulva. And when I looked at her, I could see there was a little darkish area there. It had been biopsied. It was pre-cancer, not cancer. And I'm having her do topical ozone oil on that like a couple times a day. She just takes a Q-tip. She puts it on the area. It's the size of about a, oh, maybe a half a dime. And it'll go away. She doesn't need surgery. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can inject ozone into basal cells for skins. Sometimes that will work and take it away. Various rashes, you know, just depending on what it is. Right. If there's an infectious component, it can help. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. I think the, the desirability of it is that for many conditions, it can make a big difference. And in that whole group of people that have poor mitochondrial function, which is, you know, it might be not good memory or they're mold exposed or they're tired, that ozone is really helpful in those treatments because it activates mitochondria. Mm -hmm. and it gets them to be more efficient and work better. When I first started to do this, I do triathlons. And so I have very good metrics on, like on a bicycle, how many watts can I push of power? This might be too much information. I love it. For your audience. I don't, okay. Nope, great. So how many watts of power I can push on a bicycle related to my heart rate? Mm hmm so I was going to do a test because I wanted to prove to myself after I did, I was with Dr. Schellenberger. I want to see, does this actually make a difference for me? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting on the bicycle. I'm pushing 200 watts. My heart rate's 158. My threshold, like if I go above 162, my body goes anaerobic. My body starts producing lactic acid. Mm -hmm. So I'm pedaling 200 watts, 158. I'm just below threshold. I can do that for a couple of hours. I did 10 ozone treatments. I did, or 12. I did two a week for six weeks. And then I redid the test. At 200 watts, my heart rate now, instead of being 158, was 138. That's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I could push 212 watts at my threshold at 158 versus 200 watts. That's a big difference. You know, if you're riding 100 miles, that's a half an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So now in an athlete, it's producing improved performance because you have improved biochemistry in your mitochondria. In a person who can't get off the couch because they're so exhausted, it has the same effect. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get an improvement in their energy. And if the brain is the problem where the brain can't produce enough energy because it's full of mold or lime, you know, glyphosate or whatever their thing is, it's going to improve the performance of the neurons because they can make more energy and it's going to help them to feel better and recover abilities, memory, sleep, mood, you know, things like that. Right. Mitochondria are the fountain of youth, as I like to call it. That's so right. You can do anything. And they're, they're really the cause of life. So right. no mitochondria, you know, you, they have this thing of, you know, you could go three weeks without water and or maybe four weeks without water and three weeks without food and no weeks without mitochondria, maybe one second, you know, it's, it's yeah, no, you can't. So as a reminder, the mitochondria, are the thousands of organelles in each cell that produce energy overall. And so, you know, and some of the discussions between professionals, the last couple of years, as we've kind of watched whatever this is that we're living in evolve, you know, mitochondria have really become a big thing. If your mitochondria are compromised, you're not going to be very resilient to getting a nasty infection. Typically the difference between typically an, a five-year-old and a 50-year-old is usually mitochondria for the majority of people, because our mitochondria typically declines over eight over time. So you're and, saying and, you've got yeah. a unique advantage in the triathlons now is what you're saying. So you do some ozone therapy and you can push a lot harder and now you're right. winning. <laughs> right. Right. 
Good stuff. I love it. It's good biohacking. Very, very good stuff. Um, yeah. On this note, you just mentioned brain stuff. And on your extensive list of things in the toolbox is neural therapy and are using ozone for, I know it's one of the modalities, but what is neural therapy separate? Like what is, yes, this is like your nervous system or brain function or whatever, but what does neural therapy mean in your toolbox? Technically, is it also a, a factor of ozone or is it something else? Just curious. Well, neural therapy was developed in Germany in the late 1940s by a couple of doctors who by accident noticed that after a local anesthetic injection in a finger where the person had a cut, that her chronic migraine headaches went away. Mm. And she was sensitive enough to notice that there had been a change. And he was sensitive, name is Heineke, mm. two brothers both physicians, they were wise enough to listen to the patient and think maybe the anesthetic local injection had something to do with her chronic migraines. And they started to experiment with using procaine. So procaine is a local anesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's not usually used anymore in surgery or dentistry because it has a very short half-life. You know, within a half an hour to 45 minutes, it's gone. And lidocaine or these, you know, the more modern ones, they last longer. Mm. Procaine is also interesting because it's in a different chemical class than lidocaine in that when the body takes it apart, it turns it into two B vitamins. So it's actually a kind of a healthy thing to give someone. So what they start experimenting with is in areas where people had had trauma, injury, where the skin was cut, that if you injected a local anesthetic, procaine, into the scar line that you could turn back on the injured nerves where the scar was and make them function better. Mm. So what we've since learned, because now there's electrodes small enough to be able to put it in the outside of a nerve membrane and the inside of a nerve membrane. And so if you imagine here, here's a nerve, mm -hmm. it's been cut. Mm -hmm. So you got a skin cut surgical or traumatic, doesn't matter. And if you track the nerve on the healthy part of the nerve, not the part where it was cut, where it's now scarred, the nerve is a negative charge on the outside. But in the area where the scar cut across that nerve, it switches to a positive pole. And so if the brain is trying to get an impulse from your brain, let's say to my finger, and there's a cut across there, it tracks along the nerve, negative, 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 jumps. But when it hits the positive charge, it's either stopped completely, in which case the person will have a numb feeling there, or it slows it down to where the brain is expecting a instantaneous message to finger, and then finger sends instantaneous message back, I got it. Mm -hmm. If the scar slows it, it's message sent, brains waiting, where's the that you got it? Mm -hmm. And it might be laid, de delayed a tenth of a second, a twentieth of a second. It should be pretty much instantaneous. The brain then goes into a didn't get it, send another one, didn't get it, send it a different mm -hmm. way, puts noise, puts mm -hmm. noise everywhere in this very complex system. And what they found is where you inject the scar with procaine, it repolarizes, it re-switches it from a positive charge on the outside, which is blocking the flow to a negative charge, and now it flows. And I have had thousands of patients where, let's say they had a breast augmentation and the surgical scar was around the outside of the nipple. That's where the implant was put in and they have a numb nipple. And you inject the scar around the thing and the feeling comes back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or someone's had a tummy tuck and it's numb. Mm -hmm. And you do the scar and the feeling comes back. Mm -hmm. Now. It can affect other areas. So I had actually had this one two days ago. She is the wife of a professional baseball player. Mm -hmm. She's had chronic thoracic and lumbar back pain for years. And it's so uncomfortable that she can't really lay on her back. And her husband is from the Dominican Republic. And he took her there to see some orthopedic surgeons and some pain management people because she was in distress. And he's trying to help her. And they did a nerve ablation on her back, didn't do one thing. She went to an orthopedist. They said that she had a disc pressing on her spine and she needed disc surgery and she hadn't done that yet. And so she heard about us. So she came in and I saw her. 
and I examined her and I have done a lot of work with low back pain and I have injected thousands of people in their low back with prolotherapy or prolozone therapy Mm -hmm. to help them with their back. And there are telltale signs on the physical exam that can tell you, yes, prolotherapy will work on that person or that person does need other kinds of therapy, physical therapy or distraction therapy to help their disc. And, you know, if the nerve's getting pinched really bad, maybe they even do need surgery. So I examined this woman's back and I could not find anything like that. She did not have any of the signs of a nerve being pinched by a disc Mm. or a disc out of place or a sacral iliac joint that was inflamed. She didn't have any of it, but Mm. she was uncomfortable laying down. So I did some energetic testing on her Mm. and the energetic testing is called ART, autonomic response testing. I did the testing on it and I was looking for what were the big issues in her body. The body can be like a biofeedback device. Mm -hmm. So you can give it sort of challenges and it can tell you, yeah, that's a problem or no, that's not a problem. And the first thing that came up that was a problem in her body was that she had an infected tooth. So my vial has ground up root canal teeth in it. And when I challenged her with that vial, her body went like, holy cow, that's what's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we located two teeth that had root canals, one lower and one upper. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's do an experiment because I can't find anything wrong with your back. They already did an ablation. It didn't do anything for her. And I took some procaine. So this is neural therapy. Mm -hmm. I took some procaine in a syringe and I injected it so that I was able to block the tooth like a dentist would block it if he was going to pull it or put it, you know, fill a cavity. And I did both sides. And I went out to see another patient. I said, let's give this about 15 or 20 minutes. And I came back in and I said, how's your back? And she said, I don't feel the pain at all, at all. It's gone. Okay. That's pretty slick. That's pretty quick. That's pretty killer. Okay. Uh, so I said, you don't need an orthopedist. You need to go see my dentist down the street. Mm-hmm. We have to get these root canals out and your back pain will go away. Mm-hmm. And don't let anybody touch your back and don't do any more nerve ablations because they're just hurting you and they will not help you. It is not what's wrong. So this nerve network, this autonomic nervous system mm-hmm. coordinates all body activities. Mm-hmm. And I have seen this happen where the person had neural therapy And sometimes it's odd, you know, like the guy had a hernia repair by a good surgeon and now his penis is numb. Mm -hmm. Now the nerves that go to the penis aren't near where you do an inguinal hernia, Mm -hmm. different. And I injected his hernia scar Mm -hmm. and the numbness went away. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things like this that uh, I have another one that's really good. This was a patient, the patient's a mother and she's 50 and she brings in her daughter who's 19 who's engaged and she's engaged, but she's a virgin. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's not going to have sex till she's married. That's her. That's how she rolls. Mm -hmm. But her mother was very concerned about her because she said there's an area on her back, which if anyone touches it, she will go kind of crazy. Like she will weep. She won't let anybody be around her. And I'm very concerned that her first night after she's married could be a rough night for both she and her husband. Because if he touches her low back, right above her belt line, she really can't control us. Can you help her? Okay. Random. The history is, at age eight months, she got acute lymphocytic leukemia. Hmm. Okay. And the treatment is chemotherapy, which she got. These abnormal lymphocyte cells can go through the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain. And the regular chemotherapy drugs don't get into the brain. So you could treat the body with the chemotherapy. But if you don't treat the brain, it will come back. Mm. So part of the protocol was to do a spinal tap, inject the Mm. chemotherapy into the spinal fluid, turn the kid upside down, get the spinal fluid to go back up into the brain. And she had like 25 of these between the ages of eight months and two years. And the area where her back trigger point was, was where she got all the spinal taps. How did you find that out? (laughs) I muscle tested the place. Oh, okay. I just muscle tested the place. Got it. And I got the place. And then I had the history and I thought, what the hell? Let's Mm -hmm. try this. So I said, I want to put some procaine in your back. She said, you're going to have to hold me down. She was totally willing. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to hold me down. Okay. So she laid down on the table and she got in like a position, like you do a spinal tap. Mm -hmm. And then we had a couple of people hold on to her. And I took a couple cc's of procaine over the area where the injections were done for the, now this is 18 years later. Mm -hmm. And she screamed and she cried and she sweated. And I said, come back in two days. She came back in two days and she walked right up to me and she took my hand and she said, feel my back. And it was nothing, 
was nothing. And she was fine. She got married and was fine. I wonder how long she was dealing with that. Well, she was dealing with it for from the time right. she was a very small infant. And she had no idea. She had not put the two things together. Her mother hadn't put the two things together. They weren't thinking of it. They just thought it was some crazy, right. you know, some crazy trigger that she had that nobody knew. She never had a serious back injury. And it was just an incredible. I mean, it's that's neural therapy. Yeah, I had okay. no idea. I had no idea what that was <laughs> of that comment. Who's the grandfather of neural therapy? Heineke. Oh, Heineke. H- you mentioned that. H-U-E-N. EKE. Okay. And there's books, you know, there's textbooks on neural therapy and there's courses for doctors on neural therapy. We do neural therapy on every patient. Every patient, when they come in, we have them make a diagram. Where's all your scars? You've had pierced ears. You've had a belly button torn off. You've had tongue pierced. You've had this surgical operation. You've had this trauma where you got a scar. Wherever the scars are, we treat them all. Mm. And it opens up their system. Yeah. I always thought you use lasers for scars. You can use lasers, you can use essential oil massage. The neural therapy works the best. Yeah. I mean, injecting it, it works the best. Yeah. And usually it's a one-time treatment. Occasionally it has to be done twice, but usually it's a one-time treatment. I had another one. She was a New Yorker that had moved to Florida and she hated Florida because she couldn't sweat. Mm. And I said, when did you stop sweating? And she said, after I had a C-section, this is 15 Mm. years before, ever since then I couldn't sweat. She knew that, right? Yeah. She knew that. And she was also being treated for high blood pressure and she gained weight and she couldn't lose weight. She would starve herself and she couldn't lose weight. So those are my three buttons. Okay. And I did her C-section and she had a little scar up above here and she had pierced ears and I always knew the belly button. Mm. So in the middle of doing the scar, that was the C-section. Sometimes there's emotions wrapped up in these scars. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that it was an emergency C-section. Baby was in trouble. It was panic mode. And when I injected that scar, she started to like trigger back to what happened. And she got upset. She was crying. And I just sort of talked her through. We're almost done. Just hang with me. And by the time I finished the scar, I looked down at the table and the table was soaked with sweat. Mm. It turned it on immediately. Gosh, look at all the detoxification that poor woman couldn't do. That's right. That's right. And 15 days later, when I rechecked her, she had weaned down her blood pressure medicine and she'd also lost like six pounds without a change. Oh, yeah. Like it had had really made a huge difference in her because her nervous system couldn't control things properly. Mm, That's fascinating. And I always think if you hear similar tales or stories from different sources, for example, you will hear about emotions being wrapped up in the nervous system from people doing acupuncture and having people just weep on the table from doing something, something like that, where they're triggering or addressing a certain space or a scar or something with the autonomic nervous system. I mean, there's multiple ways that, that could be triggered essentially, right? You know, even though yeah. this is a really cool way to do it. I had no idea. I learned a yeah. lot right there. Cool. Okay. Very awesome. I was going to say, man, headaches are like no big thing with those are so fun stories. I hope that our listeners had as much fun listening to these as I did. Dr. Minkoff has got a lot of stuff you have a practice in Florida, LifeWorks Wellness Center, which is in your bio. And then also you own Body Health. So are these the two primary places? Where should people find you online if they want to learn more about some of the things you have? So LifeWorksWellnessCenter.com, there's tons of videos and information about the practice. And BodyHealth.com is my supplement company. There's tons of information on there too. So, you know, go look around. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of information. I've been doing two newsletters for the last 20 years. They come out every other week. One's called the Body Health Newsletter and the other one's called Optimum Health Report. They're free. If you go on on the website, you can register for them. And there's always some fun stuff or interesting information or patient stories. And we have a lot of people who get it and it's it's popular. So cool. Try that. Thanks so much for coming back today. Hey, it was fun. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Sharing and reviewing this podcast is the best way to help us succeed with our mission to help integrate the best of East and West and empower you to raise the bar on your health story. Just go to reviewthispodcast.com forward slash less stressed life. That's reviewthispodcast.com forward slash less stressed life. And you'll be taken directly to a page where you can insert your review and hit post.